Okay. All right, so hello everyone. Thank you all for coming. My name is Praneet. Uh, this is my colleague Thomas. Hi. And we are part of Scalar. Scalar is the premier cloud management platform for managing your public and private clouds. So we're going to do our presentation on how to get your developers to really start enjoying the cloud and start using it full-fledged. All right, so we'll start by telling you guys a story. So this is the story of Patrick. Patrick works in the corporate IT department of his company. So now there's one thing that really scares Patrick, and it's shadow IT. Basically, when his developers get fed up with IT policies, they're tired of Patrick telling them what to do. So they go underneath the radar, and then they start provisioning their own infrastructure, running their tests, and Patrick and the IT department has no idea about it. And this is really critical, and this is really scares Patrick. So let's go back to six months when Patrick first heard about OpenStack in Portland. So what's the situation six months ago? Well, Patrick knows that his developers enjoy using EC2. It's just so easy for them. They can call up instances, put their code on it, run their tests, and it's very easy for them to do everything. It just makes them more productive. So Patrick tries to do the right thing. He goes to them. He says, come on, guys. You have to listen to IT policy. You really have to follow all these rules that we've set up, because that's very critical to our corporation to exist. However, he also understands that, well, my developers are being more productive. They're getting their job done much easier. So what, what do I really do? I'm kind of at an impasse here. So, but then things really start getting dangerous. So sensitive customer data starts going up on public EC2 instances. These are unsecured. Their ports are open. And Patrick has no idea that this is happening. So Patrick realizes that this is going to get him fired. This isn't good for the company at all. So he gets motivated. So he goes to Portland. He decides, OK, my developers need a cloud. They need some sort of sandbox where they can go, a secure environment where they can do their tests and run everything. Goes to Portland, downloads OpenStack, installs it in his infrastructure. So what happens now? What happened today? Right? So after six months, things haven't gotten any better. His developers are still using EC2. They just don't care much for OpenStack. It's just too hard for them to use. So Patrick is sad now. Basically, Shadow IT has just gotten worse. There's developers out there who aren't telling Patrick what they're doing. Unsecured infrastructure is being used for his sensitive data. And Patrick is worried that he's going to get fired again. So what happened? Why didn't, why why did this happen? Why didn't uh, OpenStack work? It's IT's job. Is it IT's job to get out of the way? Is it IT's job to not create any value for their company? I don't think so. IT's job is to really give a secure environment for their engineers to work in. It's really to make their engineers more productive and not bad for the company. So remember, the moral of the story is it's the simple solution isn't just Here's your private cloud. Here's OpenStack. Go use it, and don't touch EC2 again. That's not how we do things. So now that we've seen what Patrick did and why it did not work, we're going to look into what Patrick could have done and what could have made things better. So in a world, what Patrick should have done is he should have tried to deliver business agility to the engineers via OpenStack. So how to do that? The first thing is tooling. The developers that are using this cloud, if they go and use EC2, they have lots of services. There's all these MIs they can use, all these blog posts they can read, all these recipes they can use. It's super easy for them to get started with EC2. So Patrick has to do the same thing for OpenStack. He has to provide that tooling. He has to provide those golden images that developers can reuse. And of course, developers do, do, they just don't want to go through Patrick. So this all needs to be available via a self-service portal. People don't, don't want to go through him. You should just make it available and just not be there. So the first thing you should do, that's tooling. Now the second thing Patrick should do is just rethink his IT, his IT policies and make it easier for his developers to comply. Because when you think about it, if you're a developer, it's OK if you have to do 10 minutes of red tape every week to get a server. That's fine. But if you're using the cloud, you're going to be provisioning servers every hour. And then 10 minutes of red tape every time you get a server, that's not going to work. So Patrick should take his IT policies and automate all of these so that developers don't have to go through him, 
don't have to go through the IT department to comply with policies. A few examples is going to be tagging, that should be automated, security groups, access, all of this should be automated. And the last thing Patrick should do is, you shouldn't forget about multi-cloud. Of course, we love OpenStack, but EC2 isn't a swear word either. Thing is, there are some, there's going to be some use cases where public cloud will make sense, and Patrick should understand that. And in those cases, it should make it possible for developers to use the public cloud too. That's going to be EC2, that's going to be Rackspace, GCE, whichever one works the best. Thing is, Patrick should make sure he stays in control all the time. So the three things, Patrick should, if you just circle back, he should provide the right tooling, he should facilitate integration with IT policies, and he should foster multi-cloud. And why is that going to work? Well, remember this thing, cloud isn't actually easy. It's not easy for developers to start using the cloud. If you look at it, like, look at the Netflix people. They built, like, lots and lots and lots of tooling to use EC2. They are very good at it, but that's a huge amount of experience they have that Patrick's developers probably don't have. So if he makes things easier for them, they're going to appreciate that, and they will use what he provides to them. And the good thing is, if Patrick does this, it's actually going to make his job easier too. Because remember, Patrick's job is to facilitate business agility. But that's not all. He's also the guy who's in charge of making sure infrastructure is secure. He's also the guy who's in charge of making sure it's cost effective. So why is that going to work? Well, cost control. Cloud can be cost effective. But if you leave it to developers to make it cost effective, well, there's a pretty good chance that some infra dev infrastructure is going to not be shut down and it's going to cost and cost money. No one's going to ever shut it down. In the end, it's going to be more expensive. So Patrick should provide cost visibility, be able to tell developers, hey, look, this is how much your development is costing. That's something Patrick should do. And he should also encourage cost accountability. That's going to be things like charging back to the business units that are creating those costs. And of course, if Patrick is in the central position, if everything regarding cloud is going through Patrick, because he's the one driving cloud, inter driving cloud adoption in the business, this will be possible for him. And the second thing that will be possible is security. If everyone goes through Patrick's infrastructure, then they'll be able to, en to enforce the right security policies. Because developers, it's not like they dislike security policies, it's just that they don't care about it. So if Patrick can automate all of these policies, can enforce them transparently, so that developers don't have to think about security and just have it be a given, then security in the cloud is possible. But it's Patrick's responsibility to actually deliver this. So this is going to leave us at that. There's basically three styles that we wanted to share with you guys, and hopefully that you'll take home and think about it. The first one is there's really a business case for cloud. Business units are going to use cloud. It's going to happen anyway. So for IT, it's really a choice of either you get on board or you're going to get sidetracked. So for Patrick, his job is to embrace cloud. His job is to drive cloud adoption at the company. His job is to get IT to be the center for cloud, to have every cloud initiative go through IT's infrastructure. So that's really IT has a role to play in cloud adoption. And how they can play that role is by delivering the right tooling, is by facilitating compliance with IT policies, automating all of that, and by enabling multi-cloud. And this, in turn, will make IT's job easier in terms of cost effectiveness, as well as in terms of security. So at that point, you probably guessed it. That's what our software does. So I thought hopefully we can help you guys with. Of course, we're not the only ones out there. Some people in the audience do something that's very similar. And we we'll just say thank you, guys. Uh, our booth is just behind you. So if you want to talk to us, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine, too. Um, we have like five minutes left. So if you guys have any questions, we'd love to take them and hear about it. Anyone? If you don't have any, that's fine. If you don't have questions, you can just, or if you don't want to ask them in public, you can just, as soon as we're done, just come and ask this. Okay, guys, then. Thank Thanks you. for our attention. Hopefully, you take home something away from this.